Hey, it's Omni Dog here. Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens. And we've got an overview of The Amazing Spider Man, uh, Volume 4. One of the first ones to come out in Volume 4. Uh, the first one, I guess, would be Shang Chi, Master of Kung Fu. But this and Avengers. So, uh, but this is one of the first really big titles to come out. In a volume four, let's see what we have here as a, okay, we just have the plain cover board here. That's okay. But this is when, in, this is when, in my opinion, for me, this is when Spider-Man really got interesting for me as a teenager, a young teenager. Yes, back in the uh, early 70s, Spider-Man uh I was mostly a DC kid, but Spider-Man got way interesting. And let's see, is this um, all we're getting as far as the table of contents? No, they have a, typically they have very good table of contents, and they do. Here we have who the creators are in this. Uh, Jerry Conway does the bulk of all the controversial and interesting issues. Gil Kane, John Romita, Ross Andrew does the do the bulk of the uh, really uh, some of the more famous issues, of course, featuring this guy. And this is the DM cover, which I personally liked. Uh, the other one uh, I can show you at the very end. There's a lot of extras in this book. I'll show you at the end is a very beautiful Frank Cho cover. So here we go with um, the table of contents, which is Amazing Spider-Man 105 all the way through Amazing Spider-Man 142 with Marvel Super Heroes 14 and the Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 9. So... Here we go with 105, Spider Slayer. Pretty classic Gil Kane art. Gil Kane, one of the great silver and bronze age artists. Um, so we'll just sort of take our time and wander through here. You can always tell the Gil Kane nose because it's got those little stripes. Highlight the nose before we get to the first really meaty book, which is, in my mind, there were three books in this run that were remarkably different for, here we have letters page, which is really cool. Um, Remarkably different for the time period. Now, I I don't think... See, here's Gwen Stacy. And at the time, this is who uh, Parker, Peter Parker, was seeing in this time period, which is, of course, what makes what comes up such a big deal. And so here is crossover with Doctor Strange. And, I mean, I might as well just jump to the issue that I <laughs> that is such a big deal to me anyway. Uh, for the very beginning here, well, here's a Hulk issue. Now, see that that's how these these stories are actually v very good. But um, 
it's all a big buildup to a chunk of stories right in the middle. Obviously, 129 with a Punisher. And then, um, well, wait. Right about here. 120. Okay, and here's a st this sets it up. Turning Point by Jerry Conway. Just from this fan's perspective, meaning me, um, at the time uh, when it was 1973, um, there really wasn't, uh, I was 14 years old. There really, I remember this being in, uh, it feels like, um, um, not much was going on in the DC universe and I was a DC head. So that's why I was reading a lot of Captain America and a lot of Spider-Man. Those were the comic books that I was reading. And so this is Jerry Conway setting it up and, um, not much was really happening and not much would ever really happen, it seemed, in those books at that time period. And I, re I um, just remember these two stories were just remarkable for what was going on in them. Uh, in this book, this book, 121, which uh, I still have, and it was still in, last time I checked, extremely good condition, Gwen Stacy dies. A major, and I'm not spoiling it for anybody, a major character in a major comic book dies. That is remarkable for that to happen in this book. Green Goblin uh, kills Gwen Stacy, and Parker has, um, you know, his... his um, his identity is well known to Green Goblin. Whoops, I just knocked the camera there. His identity is well known to Green Goblin at this point. And Green Goblin becomes unhinged and takes his vengeance out on um, uh, Parker and Gwen Stacy because he knows that, uh, that Parker loves Gwen Stacy and... Parker, Peter Parker can't save her. And Parker swears, Peter Parker swears vengeance upon him, upon the Green Goblin. So here's the other famous cover, and I have this one still in pretty good, con I mean, extremely good condition um, from when I was a little kid. Uh, well, little kid, 14 years old. Um, and this is the issue in which Green Goblin dies, which is a major villain. This is this it's it feels like this was the first really big villain that Peter Parker had, the first charismatic kind of major villain that Peter Parker as Spider-Man had and um and it um it had an effect on me like, wow, Marvel makes things happen in comic books. That really is something that's amazing. Um, and, and of course, you know, Lois Lane at this point is still trying to get Superman to marry her. And, um, you know, Batman was just starting. Well, Batman was pretty dark and gritty at this point and was interesting and um, we were still a little bit away, I feel like, from Green Lantern and Green Arrow getting their social conscience. So this was the bee's knees, man. This was really remarkable. And here, Spider-Man is beating the tar out of uh, Green Goblin. He's not getting ready to kill him, but he is wailing on him, getting ready to take him to jail. And... Green Goblin is done in by his own uh, machine. So there he is, the death of Green Goblin. And it's pretty amazing that... And this is where uh, Mary Jane steps in. 
sort of, uh, but it's pretty remarkable that that's what happens in this book, I think, from a historical perspective. And then we get the introduction of Luke Cage, um, which is historic. And, you know, Flash Thompson goes through his problems in Vietnam. Here's Luke Cage um, getting introduced. And let's see, let's get to the Punisher, who really, I, I feel like, and the Vulture, which I, I still think is the craziest character. Um, I feel like the Punisher, now this is a, a classic historical cover, but at the time, he really didn't make that much of an impact. He, until I would, I don't think that any of us, you know, as 14 year olds were running around going, wow, this guy's unbelievable. He's the Punisher. I don't think it was to, until the 90s that this issue got to be super popular because they brought him back, gave him his own series, ramped it up, had him killing people. And, you know, you became aware that he and Wolverine actually killed people and he actually killed people in the mob. And you became aware that, wow, <laughs> Marvel's ha having these guys kill people. That's amazing. Um, so I, at the time, I don't remember Punisher making an impact, but in the 90s, that's when, in late 80s and 90s, that's when he became, that's when that issue started to skyrocket, and that's when it made an impact. And yeah, I had it, but it wasn't in the greatest of shape. Um, before we run out of time, let's talk about all the extras, because there are a ton of extras in this book. Um there are lots of extras in the back here. So as you can see, there's a solid chunk of a ton of extra stuff in back here. So that's a really good value here. If you like extras like I do, these are really cool. So there you go. There is the overview for the amazing Spider-Man. Oh, I s said I'd show you that Cho Let's see, I think that's right. The very end here. There it is. There's the Cho cover. Look at all that line work. So there we go. Very nice. Thanks for tuning in. Peace and love. Peace and love.